nice to meet you. I'm Robbie, and when I'm in Vietnam, I usually stay in the Nang because that is where the Art for Children Gallery is. My rooms are in the Lin Chiu district, and where I live, you only see Vietnamese. But like everywhere in Vietnam, when children see a foreigner, they want to practice their English. Near my living place, there is a preschool for children, and some of those children had repeatedly asked me to come to their school, and it's difficult to keep saying no. So, but recently, two toddler books I made with Isabel van Duinen have been translated into Vietnamese. So, when the daughter of the nearby laundrette asked me again, and I happened to have those booklets with me, I said okay, and we went to the school completely unexpectedly. I told the teacher that she could put her children in a semicircle and I then will read from my books. She probably guessed that I would sit on a chair and read aloud, but I'm not good in doing that. So it became something completely different for her. How it went, you can see on the video they later sent me. It's a nice four minute example of how I look at illustrations out loud. Oh my! Oh my. 
This was an unexpected visit to a preschool, but by no means the only one. A nice Vietnamese teacher who lives in Japan, her daughter really liked our books and she had written on Facebook that I was in the Nang, with the result that all kinds of schools and parents invited me to come along. I had to promote the Art for Children gallery and I accepted the invitations. The following weeks were really very tiring but also great fun. Sometimes there were small groups and sometimes more than 100 children. This video was at the international school where they speak only English the whole day. My looking at illustrations out loud is quite special. Most writers read loud, very beautiful and enthusiastically, but I'm not a writer. I do come up with ideas for booklets, but they're simply and it's mainly the illustrator who has to do the work. And when I stand in front of a class with my books, the illustrations are my main source of inspiration. I then try to let the children enjoy this by showing how I react on the pictures. So I'm not going to explain that they can see for themselves. It's basically like giving tours in museum. I'm not going to ask when they see an apple tree in the painting what kind of fruit is in there. I will rather ask them whether the apples will be tasty or not. The difference is when we ask what fruit is in it, they will respond apples and that's it. However, when we ask whether the apples will be tasty, they will come up with a lot of possible answers, which means that the painting has become a start to their fantasy and not a proof that they know what they can see. I've been doing this for more than 40 years and in all kinds of countries, including a few where I do not speak the language, but that's usually no problem. Children understand very quickly what I mean. And of course, I was often a guest in Dutch schools, libraries and museums. I can be seen here when I was guiding in the birdhouse of Piet Mondrian in Amersfoort. What I do is very much inspired by the French filmmaker Jacques Tati. He's pretty much the founding father of the film comedy. Tati was a master in turning ordinary things into something very special. From him I learned that everything can become funny just by looking at it carefully. And that works great, especially with children. One time I had a coffee. Well, this is not coffee, but it was coffee with ice in it. So 
I start to look at it with a great interest. And then I tell the children that the ice was cold. And then I respond to them saying, Oh, you guys don't believe that? Okay. After which I get up and walk to the first child, hold a cold cup against its cheek. And is it cold? The child nods. Yes, yes. And after which all the children want to feel whether it was really cold. Of course they know ice is cold, but the children love it. You cannot always do that. The atmosphere has to be there. But you can create the atmosphere. You have to do some preparation actions and during those actions you can immediately see whether the group is ready or not. So I'm active in the Art for Children gallery and there we bring art that is specially made for children. In most museums art is explained to children, which is pretty much the same as looking in a book by Dostoevsky for pieces of text that are suitable for reading to children. Well, even in Dostoevsky you find some of those lines. But fortunately there are also children books and there is also art for children. Some artists they just love to make art, like Joker van der Weijs who made this artwork. However, most of the art for children is made by children books illustrators. I have written a book about, uh, about it, this one, and maybe I should make a video about the topic. It's so interesting. I recently met a Vietnamese children book author Hoi An, and I saw the illustration of her last book, Mommy's Heart made by Dao Dua. And it reminds me of Mon Oncle when you see the drawings. It's really the same atmosphere of Mon Oncle. So good children's books are particularly using in helping children to develop their language. There are several reasons why good language skills are of great importance. We primarily think about reading because it's useful if you can read and understand official documents and, for example, manuals. But it's just as important that we can become acquainted with the thoughts and the experience of others while reading. And a good command of language means that you can also organize your own thoughts and entrust them to paper. With our language, we distinguish ourselves from the animal. You can talk also to animals, but no matter how smart they will never understand Einstein's relativity theory. Well, you can explain this very well with sign language. With this video, you can learn the basic terms of the mathematics in sign language. For sign language, you not only use your hands, but also your facial expressions and posture, the so-called non-verbal communications with which you can convey an incredibly amount of information. Very interesting. But for this video, I would like to limit myself to the practice of looking at illustrations out loud. So, in the Art of Children Gallery, we do not, do not give drawing courses. For that you have to take lessons at the art school or in a creative center. What we mainly do is to get the children to become active based on the stories and the pictures, especially to learn that what we see is not always what we see or what we can see. Take the well-known story of the Hai Ba Trung, the two Vietnamese sisters Trung. A few thousand years ago, their husbands were eliminated by the northern occupiers, after which the occupiers thought, well, that uprising was now over. Only they didn't know the Vietnamese woman. When the male army was eliminated, they simply set up a woman's army and chased the conquerors back to the north. This is why in every Vietnamese city or village you will find a high Batrung street or square or school or whatever. All the pictures show the sisters sitting on an elephant. So I show the children this drawing and I asked them is this the elephant the ladies were riding? First, they will see an elephant until I ask them how many legs does it actually have. The nice thing about this kind of impossible pictures is that you teach children that it's something 
or sometimes good to look at the same picture at least twice. When reading out aloud, attention is focused on the language. The children are sitting and mainly it's a passively involved. They, they're just sitting and listening. Looking at illustration out loud is very interactive with the focus on experience and the more suitable the location is, the better the conditions are, the more fun you can have. For example, sitting outside with children is not a good idea. Not only there is a lot of more noise outside, but they also understand you much less well. Your voice reflects in a room and the entire group can therefore hear you better. Outside, only children in front can hear you clearly. Of course you can use a microphone, but then you must have an excellent installation and someone who can operate it and you must be used to that microphone yourself. And what I hear so regularly during guided tours is simply a disaster. So I almost never use it. The size of a group of children is less important. You do different things with a large group, but the involvement of the teachers is essential. When teachers stand at the back and leave it all to the speaker, you will mostly like have a difficult task. Teachers who very strictly control the group are also difficult to work with because the children have to be able to interact with. Then you have the teachers who sit among the children. This is by far the most pleasant situation. Teachers know how their children and they know which children you should not put next to each other. They also know when a child is starting to get bored. Those are the teachers who make working very, very pleasant. In the past, I sometimes had teachers who sat in front of me so as not to miss anything from my story. But what the children were doing completely escaped their notice. I also had the other extreme, teachers who had a very animated conversation with parents at the back. Very annoying because I had to send them out of the classroom. So, as far as children are concerned, there are a few important rules. Regular chairs are by far the best, especially if you will be talking for more than 15 minutes. Cushion, beans back and on the floor are a lot of fun, but children get tired quickly. Then I already talked about this, but it's very important that the children are not allowed to decide where they sit. That is what the teacher does. Because even the best friends side by side can become very lively and get to caught up in their own story. And then they don't hear me anymore. It's also difficult when children are within arm's reach of some various objects. No child can avoid grabbing things it can hold to take a closer look. That is also what we try to learn them, just not during the activity itself. Furthermore, children are very sensitive to all sorts of things. At the end of the week, they are tired. A day after a party, that party is still in their mind. Sometimes something has just happened. So it's always good to ask the teacher whether there are children with instructions for use or not. For example, uh, once we were doing the, the drawing music project, I had the orchestra played nice and loud, suddenly a child started to cry and it couldn't stand the noise at all. Well, sorry, I haven't said anything about the activity yet, but it's about a special form of looking at illustrations out loud. The project came about almost by accident. We were hired to introduce children to the cobra art. And normally our project always lasts one lesson. So the activity that the artists had developed also lasted one hour. But 10 minutes before the end, it turned out that we had to fill two lesson hours. So I had to quickly think of something for the second hour. Now, I just had done a project on contemporary music and the music notation of one of the pieces of music 
was not at usual with mutual writing, but with nice drawings. So I thought, okay, those children have all made painting, but they are actually pieces of music. So I quickly walked through the school and collected all kinds of instruments so the children could form an orchestra. Of course, I was a conductor and we played the different drawings. Here you see this, here you see and the kids love it, except that one I mentioned. So uh, later I carried out the same project, but with all the children. Children who attended the music schools and art schools. One group painted the music that the other group had played, then another group received those paintings, they played them while another group made new drawings. It was very fun to do. So I think it will be nice to tell you more about the regular activities of the Danang Art for Children Gallery and other of our educational projects. When you subscribe, you will see the upcoming videos appear automatically. They told me so. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I see you maybe in the next video. Tam yet.